Hi, Mary. Hi, Angelina. Today, we're going to discuss a bunch of techniques to enhance the performance of your rag. Let's get started. Awesome. Let me share my screen. Sounds good. Well, so there are a lot of different techniques, advanced techniques related to implementing rag. And we're just simply going to review or a recap, if you will, about these techniques. The first, the first technique is just the vanilla rag. And in the vanilla rag, if you remember what it means. So let me just ask you this question. What is a vanilla rag, Angelina? Oh my goodness. All right. Let's look at the vanilla rag pipeline. So the user have a query. And then you have a bunch of documents that you can refer to find the answers, right? And then you chunk the documents into document chunks. And then you retrieve uh, top K relevant chunks from the relevant document library. And then you pass that to LLMs. And then you answer the question. Great. I've yes. Thank you. I've been listening to you talking about this for more than 80 videos. And plus every day, more than 365 days already. Correct, correct. Yes, as you said, in the vanilla RAG, which, and for people who don't know what RAG stands for, it's Retrieval Augmented Generation. It's a technique where you connect your external data sources into the LLM so that when you ask questions about your own data, proprietary data, then LLM can go and find relevant text from your own data set and use that to generate the response. That's the definition of the RAG. And the most straightforward implementation is we are segmenting all the long documents into a smaller pieces. We embed them and then store them in a vector database. And later on, when user ask a question, we first can go and do a search in this vector database and retrieve the top K relevant chunks from the vector database and pass them to the LLM so LLM can synthesize the response. That's vanilla rag. Now, there are a lot of techniques introduced over the last couple of years to improve this because there is a lot of issues with vanilla rag. Just to name them a few, when you, when you're question is, let's say, so-called summarization type questions. When you say, what is this, for example, document about, or mm -hmm. there is a comparison, you want to just compare multiple things against each other. So if question has that kind of structure, vanilla rag fails to answer them. Plus a couple of other issues that, that I'm not going to just talk about now, but there are several issues with vanilla rag and researchers have introduced different types of rag improvement techniques that here we are going to cover a few of them. You can see here query enhancement, indexing enhancement, retriever enhancement, generator enhancement, and pipeline enhancement. And each one of these categories include a bunch of techniques that you can implement to improve your RAG-based system. Now, let's take a look at just some of them here. The first one is it's called creating hypothetical questions. So when user ask a question, instead of passing the query directly into the vector database, so do the search and retrieve the top chunk, what this technique says is that you can create several relevant questions to this question, and then you can go and search for those questions, right? Search for relevant chunks from the vector database that are related to those questions. Those are hypothetical questions. And then you can aggregate all the retrieved chunks and pass those into LLM to generate the answer and pass that answer to the user. So th this is before you are asking a question, right? This is before that. The system will sync up 
potential questions that users going to ask first? Yes, we can generate some hypothetical questions that users may ask in the future. And later on, when user ask a question, we can go and find the most similar hypothetical questions that we have, and then find the relevant chunks. So that's the approach. Makes sense. Next one. The next one is called hide or hypothetical document embedding. What happens here when user ask a question, then we can generate some fake documents, like generate some responses without even having any context. So the LLM essentially generates a, the answer to this question, but those answers are not necessarily correct. These are just the hypothetical fake documents. Now that we have this fake document, then we can go and pass this document and find relevant chunks from the vector database that are similar or related to this fake document. And then use those chunks, pass them along to the LLM and LLM will synthesize the response and pass it to us. So that's called PIT or hypo hypothetical document embeddings. I see. So the last one is fake questions. This one's faking the answers. And the last one is doing a question to question comparison. This one's doing an answer to answer comparison. Yes. Let me just specify here a distinction between the last approach and this one. Here, the fake answer or the fake documents are just completely fake, right? Out of context and all that. Mm -hmm. But the previous approach, the questions that we create or generate, they are based on the actual chunks, right? But we don't know if user is going to ask them or not. We simply generate those questions. This one is completely just fake, right? Fake responses, mm -hmm. fake dot. So that's a distinction between the two appro approaches. The fake answer is generated based on the user's query. So it is based yes. on true question. Okay, okay. Yes, go it's ahead. based on the uh, true question, but it's completely fake, right? Because we just don't go to the vector database, right? So it's just simply just generate mm. a response. Mm. Okay. Next Another one. technique is called subqueries. In this technique, as the name says, when user ask a question, we can break that question into smaller subquestions or subqueries, and then we can just go and search the vector database for relevant chunks to each question or query, and then we aggregate all of the chunks together and pass them to LLM an LLM will generate a response and just return it to the user. Here you can see an example. What are the differences in features between Milvis and Lilith Cloud? To answer this question, we need to answer two different questions, basically. One is what are the features of Milvis? The other one is what are the feature features of Zilis Cloud? And then we get relevant chunks or responses for each one of them and just merge them all together. Yeah, this is the hard part. Query is going to be break, broken down into multiple queries. Each query is going to give us a bunch of chunks. We aggregate and pass them to LLM. LLM will synthesize an answer and return it to the user. Yeah, yeah. This is a hard question, right? The comparison questions are hard. Exactly. And this is a very common type of question that people may ask. The other one, which here is introduced as step back prompt. This technique involves abstracting complicated user queries into step back questions using an LLM. Then a vector database uses these step back questions to retrieve the most relevant document chunks. And finally, LLM generate the response. If you look at an example here, this is the original user question. I have a data set with 10 billion records and I want to store it in Milvis for querying. Is it possible? So that's the original query. And then this technique, this step back, is like query rewriting, in other words. It's going to rewrite that query into a more simple one. So what are what is the data set size limit that Milvis can handle? 
So these two are essentially the same thing, you know, very similar and relevant. However, we rewrite this original query into a more appropriate, uh, perhaps simple one. And then we can essentially answer this question instead of that one. So this is the original question. We rewrite it. Then we just do the rest, which is just do the search, retrieve the top uh, K chunks and pass it to LLM. And then we synthesize the answer. All right. Mm -hmm. So the, these techniques so far were for, were for query enhancement. Now let's talk about indexing enhancement. Indexing meaning that the vector database. So we are trying to optimize the vector database. And there are several different techniques. One of them here is called merging document chunks automatically. So the idea here is when we are building an index, we can employ different granularity levels, child chunks and their parent chunks. So when we are chunking the documents, we can um, store the relationship between each chunk, right? That this chunk is, or we can do it two different levels of chunking. Let's say one is like a smaller one is bigger. So that smaller one, let's say somehow is, has a parent is inside another chunk, right? So we keep the relationship between these two chunks, types of chunks. And later on, when user asks a question, when we are searching, we search for child chunks, right? At the final level of detail. And then we can merge when we apply a merging strategy. If a specific number, in this case, N of uh, child chunks from the first K child chunks belong to the same parent chunk, then we provide this parent chunk instead of those smaller chunks to the LLM as the context. So essentially what it means is when user ask a question and we are searching and we find the smaller chunks from the vector database, we look at their parents, the parent chunk, right? And then we merge those parents to in a more coarse grain rather than very fine grain chunks. And then we pass the parent chunks into the LLM. So this way, LLM has better context and hopefully it can answer the question in a better way. So that's what it, this approach is doing. Why do we want to do this? Because it's essentially the same information, right? So you pass three child chunks or you pass them as a whole. Isn't that the same thing? This one, I don't understand. A no. And look at this example. Let's say if I search for child chunks, right? Let's say I get these two, right? Mm. This one and this one. If I pass these two to generate the response, pass them to LLM, LLM doesn't have enough context. But I see. when I look at their parent chunk, maybe the parent chunk has even extra information, right? This one, which is not necessarily gotcha. part of the retrieval, but it gives more context. And when I pass this to LLM, LLM can generate a better answer. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Another technique is to have a hierarchical approach, meaning that we can have different types of indexes or indices in our vector database, a hierarchy. We can, for example, in this case, when we are generating embeddings for documents, we can first summarize the entire document, right? So we repeat that for all the documents. So we have summaries of each document and then we embed and store them in the vector database. And then now for each document, we do the standard technique, which is chunking them to a smaller pieces and we embed them. But we get the relationship between these two indexes, meaning that we have a document summary index, and then we have all the chunks that are related to this particular document. Later on, when user ask a question, what we do, we first go and search through all the document summaries to see which document summary actually can, or document can answer my question. And if I can find the relevant document, 
Now, this document, I already have all of the relevant chunks for this. Now I can go and do another search on the chunks and find the specific chunks from this document and then pass them to LLM to generate a response for it. Is that clear? Yeah, smart. All right. And if you remember, we covered a lot of these techniques in our book before, just to mention that all of these concepts have been around for a while. Mm -hmm. And another technique is doing hybrid search or retrieval in this mm -hmm. case. And then we do a re-rank. If you remember, we have two types of search. We have a keyword search or a free text search. And then we have semantic search. Now, this technique says that hybrid search works better than semantic search or keyword search alone. And when user ask a question, we can do two types of searches. One is just do a semantic search and we find some relevant chunks. Let's say five relevant chunks. We repeat this process for keyword search. And typically the algorithm is BM25 algorithm for doing keyword search or TFIDF. This is a more advanced version of TFIDF. So we do a BM25 and it gives us another five uh, relevant chunks. And now we have 10 chunks. Then we pass these 10 chunks into another component, which is called a re-ranker. And this re-ranker is going to re-rank or reorder the relevance of this each chunk to the actual query. And then after that, we have another list of 10 documents, but this one has been sorted, right? And ordered based on the relevance. And then we pass that top 10 documents or chunks into the LLM to generate the answer. Okay. And this is pretty much needed in a production ready application. So re-ranking is going to improve. All of these techniques do help a lot, but at the minimum, you should always do have hybrid search and also re-rank the results. Sounds good. Thank you. Remember to hit the subscribe button and come back to see us again. See you next time. Leave question in the comment section so that we can help you. Join our community. Absolutely. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you.